What's up, what's up everyone welcome to another video today we're going to be talking about the units that have helped me the most for my journey in genshin impact and as we are approaching the end of genshin impact 3.0 and moving quickly into 3.1 and eventually 3.2 it's just going to go by really really fast i want to share a little bit about the characters that have helped me pretty much trivialize genshin's end game in its entirety i mean these characters have been out for quite a while I mean, most of them have been out for quite a while which just goes to show i mean Hoyoverse really has been putting in newer characters that are redefining or meta changing. So it's safe to assume that going forward, it's unlikely that Hoyoverse will be introducing characters that are going to be a cut above everyone else. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you guys exactly which characters at what constellation that I invested them to with what weapon that I'm currently using them on that has now helped me trivialize Abyss pretty much every single time. I'm not giving you guys teams, I'm giving you guys specific characters and and to make this even more special, I want to limit this video to just five characters, totaling five of them, which if you just copy these five characters and their constellation investments, which honestly, if you started playing the game from the very beginning, you would have these five characters at these constellations with these weapons. The resources you would have gotten throughout the years is enough because I don't have any C6 characters. Okay, with that said, let's get into the video. First characters first is going to be Xing Chu. Now, these aren't necessarily in any numerical order it's not like number five is the worst number one is the best all five of these characters did contribute to my account in drastic ways that i simply cannot put a specific ranking amongst these five but Xingxiu, ever since the beginning when I first picked him up, at, I think I believe 1.2. When Ganyu first came out, I tried to pair him in like back then. It was a really awkward freeze team and I really didn't like him to be honest when I first started playing him. And I just, just felt that, well, there's nobody in game with apart from Kaya. Maybe at the time, uh, Chong Yun worked pretty well with him. And I just didn't like that playstyle. However, as um, 1.3 came out, Hu Tao came out, and I immediately found uh, Xingqiu Hu Tao to be extremely powerful uh, and potent in all forms of content, even group content. A lot of people would want to say like, wow, Xingqiu in group content uh, with Hu Tao, they just don't work, right? I mean, yeah, it doesn't really work that well, but uh, the amount of damage is so damn high that you really only need one or two charge attacks to kill anything. And when it comes to Xingqiu's constellation, back then I just had him at C2 and I felt that he was already very powerful at this constellation. Now, of course, it's very easy for me to recommend, well, get him to C6, right? Like, obviously. But uh, when it comes to C2 Xingqiu, he's already good enough to the point where if you put a little bit more resources to invest into his stats, uh, the difference is not as drastic as one would think. So C2 Xingqiu is going to make it onto this list because I just can't express into words what he has done for my account. And I'm sure for many other people's account, right? As uh, Ayaka did come out eventually and he was quickly slotted into her team as the hydro applicator for that until he was eventually replaced by Kokomi. And nowadays he spends a lot of time in Raiden National or National or Double Hydro Hotel teams. It's really just uh he just he's a character that just never stops giving, and I would foresee that in the future he's going to continue to serve our accounts just as well as he always has. Okay, so the next character I want to talk about is Zhong Li. Okay, again, remember, it's not in any particular order. This character, since his release, has really helped me play the game in comfort. If you like to watch TV shows or you like to multitask or you're not such a hardcore player that you're always focused on the game, or you're, you know, a bit of a boomer with a uh, reaction speed that's of the equivalent to a snail crossing the street, this character is going to be your best, best friend. Now, Although most people would say C0 Zhongli is incredibly good and there's no denying that C0 Zhongli is good, but I'm just gonna say C2 Zhongli was when I really noticed this character kind of elevate my gameplay to the next level. Really, that burst applying the shield made it so much easier to cycle through his- like, I never have to reshield consciously. It's always a subconscious decision when everybody else's rotations are finished and I swap onto Zhongli, like, well, might as well just give myself another shield. Survivability is at an all-time high. Healers in Zhongli's team is truly not necessary. Zhongli teams are the only teams that I can play in the game where I can choose to forego the healer spot and go full on 
like maybe two support DPS, meaning two off-field DPS. Or you always can throw Kazuha in there to swirl the main element if you're playing some sort of elemental team, right? It's very easy to play Zhongli teams. They are by far, in my opinion, the most comfort picks and in, in a way, casual friendly team comms that are available in the game. Now, I want to reiterate, you don't have to have C2. C0 works fine, but the reason I mentioned C2 is because of the consistency of his shield. Let's be honest, in Abyss 12, if you face tank all the boss's hits, your shield more than likely will break. So if you're running a C0 Zhongli without a healer on your team and then your shield breaks, which likely means you have to retry the run and then incorporate a couple of dodges in between here and there as to not break your shield, then it kind of defeats the entire purpose of even having a shield in the first place. So that's my gripe that I have with C0 Zhongli. It's not consistent enough. The weapon that I'm currently running for Zhongli is the Favonius Lance. I know other people will prefer other weapons, but personally, I think the Favonius Lance is like by far the most versatile weapon on Zhongli. It kind of turns him into a pseudo battery. I mean, the Favonius weapon on any character just turns him into a pseudo battery. And if you can have two Favonia weapons on one team, uh, pfft, really, you have essentially half a Raiden Shogun on your team. And with Zhongli's pillars, applying that Favonius effect passively when he's not even on the field. Mm, chef's kiss. Amazing, amazing character. You guys should try it out. Now, the next character is Raiden Shogun. A lot of you guys I know for a fact are playing Raiden Shogun at zero stars, which absolutely fine. Zero constellation. Raiden Shogun gets the job done for the most part, but with much smaller uh, margins for error. You need to make sure that you're cycling through the team rotations properly. You can't really put anything to waste. But to the true min maxers, that's exactly what you need, right? Like a lot of people would argue Caesar Raiden Shogun is one of the best units in the game. Uh I think Caesar Raiden is a little overrated. And that's why for me personally, when I felt Raiden really kind of took off for me was Constellation 2. Constellation 2 Raiden Shogun should not come as a surprise to anybody. And when it comes to value per dollar or primo spent, C2 Raiden is currently what I would say best value in the game in terms of Constellation. Now, remember, that's per dollar or primo spent in exchange for powers. Like if you point to C6 Yelan, of course, you're like, oh my God, but C6 Yelan is better. Yeah, but how many primo gems are you going to be spending for C6 Yelan versus a C2 Raiden Shogun and the difference in power there, uh, how big is it really? I'm one of those people who tried Raiden back at C0 and I just felt like, you know, I, I have to put in way too much for her to feel comfortable. Not to mention that her team essentially demanded level 90 Xiangling, level 90 Bennett, and level 90 Xin Chu because you need to facilitate additional damage as Raiden herself in her burst state was dealing okay damage, but it, it wasn't really respectable. For the most part, Xiangling and Xin Chu were doing more damage than what Raiden Shogun was able to pump on and she was only there on field to kind of recharge the battery for all of them so we can go for round two and cycle through the burst yada 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 but once she turned into c2 i eventually transitioned her into the raiden hyper carry team consistent of raiden c2 sara c6 bennett and Kazuha. And man oh man, I haven't looked back ever since. I've been saying this since she came out that I find her C2 is so utterly disgustingly high in value that it's a no-brainer for anybody playing this game. If you truly care about this stuff, um, you should go hunt after it. Alright, that vertical power jump is just insane. And of course, for Raiden Shogun, I do have her signature weapon, but I know the vast majority of the community is playing with the catch, and that is completely fine. You do have to shift around the substats just a little bit. The priority for energy regen versus uh, attack percentage kind of gets shifted around a little bit depending on which weapon you use. But for me, I find her signature weapon to be very good and if you can get your hand on it, it's definitely worth picking up because this character is going to stay relevant for the foreseeable future. I mean, all the characters I've mentioned are going to stay relevant for the foreseeable future. We're talking overworld events, Spiral Abyss, and even Domains, okay? Now let's move on to the next character, Hu Tao. Now this is a character I picked up back in 1.3 in her initial banner release and I would really conflicted back then on whether or not I should be getting her C1. Now, I have had the pleasure, or I guess in this case, the displeasure of playing with the C0 Hu Town. And I say displeasure, that's just because I never played with one. I've always played with a Constellation 1 Hu Town. Meaning, yes, I did eventually pick up her C1 and I never looked back. Hu Town is currently ran with the Staff of Homa and that combined with C1, I find that she is likely the most consistent 
carry that I've played with. Even till now, Sumeru coming out, whenever it's bosses, for me, it's either Hu Tao or Yoimiya. And for me, I have a soft spot for Hu Tao. When it comes to damage, Yoimiya with the proper team building uh, is creeping up pretty close to Hu Tao. And uh, fortunately, we're not comparing them at C6 because if we're comparing them at C6, Yoimiya kind of starts to take over. But we're talking about C1 because that's what I have. And this is a video about how these characters have helped me clear the game every single time. Okay, so Hu Tao. C1 with Staff of Homa, very good character, incredibly consistent, stood the test of time. Out of the Li Yue big three, Hu Tao is the one that really shined the brightest over the longest period of time. And like I've said with all these other characters, going forward, looking forward to doing business with you, Hu Tao. She's great. If you're looking for a good, solid carry, I always, always will recommend Hu Tao as one of them. Finally, we need to talk about some honorable mentions because there's not enough space in this uh, video to talk about every character character that has been amazing uh, some of them are more niche of course but we have to talk about some honorable mentions that i've noticed have just existed in the meta like ever since their release right <laughs> very consistent characters one of them is ayaka okay i'm sure like some of these characters shouldn't be coming as a surprise to you guys these characters are incredibly incredibly versatile but the reason ayaka didn't make the list is just that she is quite reliant on uh, either supports or other elements to kind of synergize with her and yes hu tao is the same right hu tao needs zhongli hu tao needs hydro but in exchange hu tao becomes one of if not the single best dps in the game i mean yeah it's arguable you guys would say like well no actually technically ayaka but i'm saying hu tao is very easy to use very consistent there's little hassle to it right it doesn't matter if you're fighting bosses just normal monsters hu tao can get up to in abyss at least with proper buffs you can get 100k per charge attack and you can charge attack like eight times and combined together it's like 800 900 000 damage and that's per infusion that's like on a five second damage downtime 800 000 damage every infusion window right that is something that ayaka struggles to do consistently if we're talking about one instance of damage for dps sure ayaka with her burst you know can do a really 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 high amount of damage to an entire group of enemies but it's not consistent right you need to get all that energy back into like recycle every abilities freeze them make sure her alt hits and perfect angle and creeping it's just not as consistent much more difficult to set up hu tao just go in boom 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 and i'm talking like single target 800k imagine if she can somehow skewer two characters and that's attacking on a little bit of extra damage you can like quite easily get 1 million damage per infusion window and i've even seen free to plays do it so it's very difficult to recommend a character like ayaka when hu tao exists in the game and the main difference between hu tao and yoimiya is yoimiya truly is a single target character whereas hu tao like if you play your cards right you can skewer like two or three enemies at the same time dealing you know decent damage even though vaporize is only going to happen for one but you can still do decent splash damage at this point to other enemies it all depends on your play style hu tao not only offers you that variety she also has very very straightforward and linear play style and i've tried playing her dash cancel on the phone that's why i recommend the c1 hu tao because if you're on a mobile phone playing hu tao at c0 it's an absolute nightmare Nightmare. okay so with that said honorable mention ayaka next honorable mention is going to be kokomi this character ever since she came out i found that she has been fulfilling quite a specific role albeit in the beginning it, it was thought to be a little more niche and people tried their bestest to make her like an on-field character which they eventually succeeded in creating the kokomi driver team but for the most part i found her most useful of course in that healer role as also a hydro applicator very consistent and i do find myself oftentimes relying on her to carry carry me through couple specific floors especially with those iterations of especially when the pyro lector is it the pyro lector they first came out i had to use kokomi because my shinchu team was placed on the other half and i didn't have another reliable hydro character i know people some use barbara to do it some use tartaglia but for me kokomi was the girl uh, whenever my team kind of took enough damage i would switch to kokomi deal with the pyro lector and continue as well as heal up my entire team oh really really good all right honorable mention goes to her and that's going to be it for the two honorable mentions i don't want to make it too cheap and be like oh ayato and then yelan and then ito no these are my two honorable mentions ayaka 
and Kokomi. Finally, last character, of course, it's gonna be Kazuha. Kazuha, um, or some may say he is way overrated. Uh, personally, I don't feel like on my channel here, I have rated him beyond what he is deserving of. Kazuha probably has uh, the most consistent usage out of all the characters. I don't think there has been a single iteration where he has fallen below 80% usage on metrics that have been gathered by people online. And, and we can use that as a reference just to show like what kind of beast this character actually is now i don't really use him in the overworld uh, i prefer my hutao team in the overworld just because everything dies so quick all right uh, I, listen i'm a huge hutao simp you're free to comment down below your most used character but i don't think I, we need to dwell on this anymore Viridescence on Kazuha. Currently, I got him running on the Sacrificial Sword, which I love so damn much. It buys me a lot of time. It generates a huge ton of particles for him specifically. I know some people are also running the Favonia Sword on him as well, which arguably is even better. But for me, I like cheesing it a little bit, pretending I have a Constellation 1 Kazuha. And man, oh man, great character, ton of fun, and Viridescent is it's just broken okay that is my list i want to see what you guys have down below please comment your top five most useful characters that have helped you clear the game till this day not your favorite five characters just the five most useful characters along with maybe two honorable mentions okay with that said thank you guys so much for watching and i hope this video will help some people out these characters have really crushed it for me in all forms of content and i can wholeheartedly say they're the best investments i have put into genshin impact period so until next time i urge you all to stay safe and peace peace bye